Hello and welcome back, everybody, as we are here for the second semifinal round. We've already seen some amazing gameplay between the two teams earlier where Billy Billy took it, and now we're going to see T1W versus Team CC. I am Rich Rad here with the amazing and spectacular Necra. Necra, how are you feeling for this Chinese contenders? I'm feeling great, Rich. We are in week four of Chinese contenders, which means that we have a ton of great gameplay that we've already gotten a chance to see and more to come. We have mm -hmm. the rest of tonight moving into the playoff bracket where Team CC has already secured the first place seed. Yes, now indeed. it's up to the rest of the teams to figure out who's going to take second, third, fourth, and onwards. I mean, the fact that Billy Billy is claiming that win earlier definitely solidifies a second. But I mean, the biggest thing with us watching this right now is will Team CC look to claim the fourth win in a row of all four of these weeks? Yeah, and let's take a look at those rosters real fast between the one winner and Team CC. We have some stars, a lot of star power, a lot of powerhouses within both of these teams that we definitely want to keep an eye on. I definitely know that for T1W, we're looking at Xuzie being one of the star DPS of the team. Um, we're also taking a look at how Molenran's going to perform because mm -hmm. Molenran's usually a Zarya player, and we'll have to see whether or not we actually get a chance to see them on Zarya based on the actual map pool that we have for these two teams agreed and you know in addition to to you know talking about that type of competition with azaria we also have to talk a little bit about echo we did just see it between both teams earlier in the other mm -hmm. semifinals that we were watching and i'm curious to see how that echo is going to play a critical role between these two teams going head to head today well, what was really interesting is that for Billy Billy Gaming, they had they had the Echo player switch. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of that had to do with kind of when you wanted to actually use a diff specific DPS hero, mm -hmm. but you had to kind of play around who's going to play which DPS and who's going to play the Echo. And that's what I'm super excited to see for both Team CC and T1W, who is playing that Echo. Well, and again, having that versatility, like you mentioned for Billy Billy is really important. It gives you a lot wider wheelhouse when it comes to that DPS lineup to try and have a more beneficial game and just mm -hmm. overall fight as a whole, which is going to be really interesting to see. And the other thing, too, that we've had a lot of talk about, you know, we're looking to probably see even when it comes from Team CC, Dia or potentially Kami, mainly being those potential, you know, the Echo players wanting to see mm -hmm. who between the two is going to be the more predominant one. Um, and if there is going to be some change up and, you know, on the alternative end, you know, Shujia with the Echo potentially versus the Doomfist. Yeah, I definitely want to see what T1W decides to do with because Shushi is one of those players that is known for their Doomfist mm -hmm. play. Um, and, and if they're playing Echo, that means they're not playing Doomfist, right? Um, so when we're going into Ilios as our very first map of the set, mm -hmm. are we really going to see a Doomfist come out here, or are we going to see kind of like the classic that we usually get a chance to see, which is more of like a dive composition on Lighthouse, um, maybe seeing a bit more of the dive on Well. Uh, it really just depends based on the architecture of the map. Yes, and you know, with us starting out on this first map, it is going to be well. That pit of doom in the center where we hope to see many bodies fall to the very pits of it. And this map going to begin, and we do see so far early that selection of the Symmetra for mobility, but then both teams going to resort to that echo. Yeah, we have Akami playing the Echo for Team CC and Shujie playing the Echo for T1W, which means that T1W is not playing the Doomfist. It means that they get to put their resources elsewhere and their resources are going into silver right now to get that first kill. Well, and also just watching the damage here coming out from Pineapple in the back and rotating around, trying to separate away from the team gets really exploited here. And you can just see Kami getting the double cleaning up and that's going to be a quick take by Team CC. One of the reasons why Echo is such a powerful hero is because of that focus beam. And if you can get your target lower than half, then you're doing double the damage. So you definitely want to make sure that you're utilizing everything in Echo's kit. And I feel like Kami was doing that really, really well for Team CC. Now they have control of the point and they're going to be able to work up to some ultimates to keep it. Well, and especially when you've got Molen Ram with this 100 energy right now, trying to generate that ultimate as quickly as possible. Turning the center corner on the opposite side of the windmill, you have Sia, though, trying to compete as well with that shield coverage, having a high energy as well. Gaga doing a stellar job with this Winston. A lot of damage into the back line, especially shutting down that hit scan and continuing to maintain this. 
I think something that T1W is really struggling with is all of the backline pressure you were talking about. You've got innovation on the Sombra, and you also have ways to keep that Sombra nice and healthy, like the armor packs from Super Rich that are coming in just to make sure that innovation can get in there and do some damage. And you've got some fantastic targets on T1W, and I just don't think that Zeke right now is really able to kind of give enough focus to the backline in order to keep everybody healthy. And hopefully you have innovation finding a EMP on that back line. Waiting for that usage, trying to play closely to the front. Manages to get a couple with the EMP. Instant takedown onto the Zarya. A duplication actually gonna come out for Kami to get that Brigitte, the extra armor packs, sticking up close with that Brawly composition and another cleanup by Team CC. It's not even just the extra armor packs, but it's also just the extra healing, especially when Team CC are playing this composition with, yes, they have a Winston for the mobility, for the verticality that's on this map, but it's really a, a very brawly composition, as you mentioned, because they have the Pavita and they also have the Zarya. So being able to kind of play with this hybrid composition, um, I think is really beneficial to have the duplicate go onto the Brigitte. Now, though, you have other ways that you're going to have to kind of fight through this if you're T1W, and that's going to be through Brav. And you have overtime beginning with that grab, potentially from the duplication. Still waiting for that pack to go away. Finally will, as the overtime still commences. You have the grab going to be tossed down by Team C. No, but he's going to get locked down at all from it. And really, at this point, you still have Team CC dominating on this point. Innovation with the EMP to try and secure this point to prevent anyone from T1W from getting on the point to complete it. Will not be able to do so. And that is going to be Team CC taking this first round of well quite handily. I don't even think we saw a Transcendence come out at all from 1987. I think mm -hmm. that 1987 actually had to, was able to kind of hold on to it um, and really didn't need to feel like it, it had to be used as kind of a panic button. Mm -hmm. And I think that really speaks volumes to how strong Team CC is as a unit. Um, and I think that going uh, zero to 100 on the very first round of Ilios is something else that supports that claim. We're moving on to Lighthouse though. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because you talked about how well Pineapple was kind of working on the back line of Team CC. And now Pineapple is gonna be playing the Ash once again. And I think that this is something that can be really beneficial to T1W. Just looking at how much that long range damage and potentially that Bob can help out in those two parts. And some early dynamite gonna come out from Pineapple in that small corridor, trying to get to that Bob quickly, like you said. No real rotation yet to the point, but nice pick in the sky, taking out Kami. But Silver in return, losing one. So it is gonna be a five versus five at the moment until Molen ran along with Shujia up front, get a lot of value. This rotation now from Pineapple, getting some shots onto the Zenyatta play, 1987 having to fall back. And this rotation is gonna allow T1W to start having dominance on this point. Yeah, this is exactly the position that T1W wants to be in. They want to take control of this point first. That way they can fight to keep it. You have a significant defender's advantage when you have control of the uh, hard point first. Um, and that's exactly what T1W wants to do here. You can get a chance to see Silver getting set up on the high ground. And Shuja with a quick pick onto Innovation as well. That's going to really stall out Team CC and force them to kind of take a couple steps back. And the fact that T1W is playing so far forward with that Echo aggressively, it's really having to force Kami to pay very attention between the architecture of these buildings to find an opportunity. Trying to rotate underneath there, you do see Shujia still on the top position, trying to deal some damage in the back on Sia, but it's really just a slow play until there's a better opportunity to collapse by Team CC. They're, the sight lines are really tough. I think that's something that you pointed out, but the sight lines for that Echo and Kami are not. No, and there is Innovation diving in as well, making sure to switch this back, and that's going to be a nice pickup here with the Transcendence going into this next fight with Team CC. Looking at the ultimate economy, I feel like T1W has a couple more tools that they'll be able to use, especially looking at Shuji's duplicate. Usually the duplicate target for the Echo is Winston, especially on this point of Lighthouse, because you have all of that open space that you can use the Primal Rage to get environmental kills. But I would also consider maybe trying to duplicate Zihi on the Brigitte, just because that might be enough healing, especially if you guys are all playing together as a unit. It's tough to yep. say. It, it really is, and as we enter into this fight, you've got that aggression on the high ground by Gaga flanking to that support line, but you have the Transcendence committed to this by T1W, surviving with a duplication from Shujia with this grab going to be thrown out, pulling multiple members from Team CC onto the point together, clustered just tightly enough for that extra damage to come zoop by Zihi, which you mentioned earlier, gaining a lot of value here. Ooh. 
And we saw the Primal Rage get popped by Gaga, so that's just another tool that Team CC isn't going to be able to have for this next fight. But they do have Innovation's EMP. This fight has been a lot more back and forth between T1W and Team CC, and I think it's because T1W is playing a lot closer together as a unit, and you can really tell that they are communicating about who they need to target down and what they need to focus on. The biggest thing, too, is with Pineapple sticking close. There's a lot of coverage for Pineapple not getting exploited in a separation here, and you've got Gaga aggressively with Team CC trying to pressure out that high ground position. The ultimate starting to be forced, though. Super Rich leading with the rally into this to allow an opportunity for fortification to survive on this point as Silver looks to really just bob multiple members away. Grab even going to be committed into this by Sia on to Shujia getting the kill. And Team CC, even though it is T1W reaching that potential overtime, it's a nice cleanup entering into this. Kami securing it further with the duplication and switching it back. Both of these teams have been able to get full value from their Zarya's and full value from their duplicates from actually choosing Zarya as the target. I think we're underestimating the value that the Graviton Surge can have in these team fights because you're looking at half of a team that has mobility and half of a team that half of the team that kind of wants to stay together as a unit. And if you can get them all together in a Graviton, then you're completely mitigating their mobility. Ooh, 1987 getting a pick early onto Silver here, making a challenge for T1W. Nice flashbang as well by Pineapple, rotating from this Ash play to the McCree, trying to change it up just enough to maybe have a better opportunity rotating onto this point. Yeah, it's not just that, though. You're, you're also looking at, you know, can we take the fight? And do we have the resources to be able to do that? And I think T1W is just waiting till the last possible second to be able to touch. And the overtime begins. The last moment touch does happen, but is there any attempt to get to it in time? And there is not going to be. What a convincing win here by Team CC and continuing to demonstrate their flawlessness in playing as a unit and really dominating over T1W on this first control map. T1W just took like a millisecond too long in order to actually get to the point and mm -hmm. i think that's something that unfortunately I, I i think that they could have they could have taken it like because of how close that last round was on lighthouse mm -hmm. i just feel like t1w was right there to be able to bring it to a round three but unfortunately they waited a little too long and, and now they're gonna be going up against team cc on king's row where i actually expect t1w to do pretty well here I would, I would agree, and especially when it comes to just the King's Row map in general. We talk so much about it for Scrim Rose and everything else. It's because I, I really believe that it's one of those maps that, as a whole, when you look at it from both a micro and a macro level, that it is a very just well-rounded map for any team and with how mm -hmm. t1w has transitioned in their coordination starting to group up you made the comment about pineapple as well in that back line trying to cluster together to not be overwhelmed that really will carry over into this but to build a little bit further you made the comment specifically too about the echo which we're going to see most likely a lot more for the remainder of the matches that happen today you know selecting that zarya how critical it is mm -hmm. and we even had some you know revision and discussion about this even from you know the overwatch league of why the Zarya or the Sigma or even the Winston are such really prime examples of selection for duplication. They're they're really, really great in terms of, you know, just getting those kills and something else that's really important about duplicating Zarya's kit that we didn't get a chance to talk about is the bubbles. Mm -hmm. You can use those bubbles to build up charge really, really quickly, especially if you're covering your your four teammates right your own zarya yourself and then the two x you know the, the two other bubbles for mm -hmm. your teammates so it just allows your entire team to get charged especially if you're going to just charge into the situation yourself Definitely. And, you know, the, the Winston 2 also being really somewhat used, as we talked about, because there's just when you have two just raging monkeys knocking characters around, it can just cause so much disorientation to mm -hmm. the opponent and just really place in a very negative position, making it a lot more advantageous as well, depending upon the map and selection as well. We haven't really seen too much of the Sigma come out so far today, but the, again, that is a very high usage because the ultimate itself is a slow generating ultimate, just like the Zarya ultimate. Well, I just wonder, you know, to just kind of backtrack a little bit, like who's going to play the Echo for Team CC? We actually did just get a sub um, in between these maps. It's going to be mm -hmm. Dia coming in for Kami. Um, okay. And Dia is an ex-Overwatch League player and probably one of the best DPS 
definitely the best DPS in the region and mm. maybe even the best DPS globally right now in contenders. Agreed. And, you know, that was where we talked. We touched on a start, actually, between both Kami and Dia of that Echo play. How yeah. is that adjustment with this substitute going to lead into this match? You can already see as we enter into it that Dia on this attacking side is hovering the Echo. So mm -hmm. that's going to be something to really keep an eye on going into this King's Row map. Yeah, and I think that that's going to pair really well with Innovation on the Sombra once again, especially if they decide to keep it. Like, the way that Innovation was playing the back line for T1W made it very difficult for T1W to find a way to engage. Instead of Zihi getting a chance to use those armor packs to keep up the back line supports or, or actually to, to provide help and support to their front line, they were more focused on having to expend those resources towards the back because innovation was there being a nuisance. So that's something that you you definitely need to, to consider if innovation decides to stick to it. But we're going to see Dia on one of their signature heroes, the Widowmaker. Ooh, it's actually going to come out too, not looking just for that initial pick that we typically see with the Widow as the doors open. L really wanting to find Shujia on the high ground for this Echo or even the potential counter hit scan Pineapple in the back on this Ash. Can't really find too many sightlines just because of a reposition from T1W, but already an early takedown from Innovation. Yeah, innovation in the back, I mean, that's just kind of like the two-pronged attack, right? You've got a lot of frontline pressure coming in from Team CC, and then you also have the backline pressure as well. And T1W is just looking for an opportunity to come back in to retake the point. And it's becoming very difficult for T1W. There's so much pressure onto Silver right now, needing to stick close enough to the supports to try and get that high health back into this engage. Already about to take it is Team CC with just a few percentage points left. And Dia, at this point, being uncontested as well in the back line, is not giving any resolve here for T1W. I think something that Team CC does super well is they go into fights, maybe split up a team, and T1W playing a part playing as single units is definitely not a strategy that they should use moving forward. It's going to be too difficult for them to win those fights against the top team in the Chinese contenders region, which is Team CC. Now, though, as Team CC moves into the streets phase, they have a lot of momentum that they've been able to generate from winning out that first team fight. And especially because they get a chance to take this aggressive positioning on the attack, that's going to keep T1W at bay, especially if Innovation just gets a chance to sit there and harass the front line with a Zarya bubble to protect them. Yeah, and Gaga in that last fight was absolutely insane, and you could already see this forward position looking with that primal rage to disrupt T1W on the defense here. It, it's been a stellar play overall. This payload easily moving through. Innovation gets a pick here onto Shujia. Not a good position to be in for T1W, and you have to take this fight five versus six right now, especially with the primal rage going to be committed. Silver tucked away with the graviton being thrown out by Sia. Multiple members locked in that doorway for extra damage as 1987 consistently places that discord over the remaining members to shut them down, and that is a consistent push here with no real hesitation. From Team CC. Oh, and 1987 is putting in so much work as the Zenyatta. You don't get a chance to see the supports pop off that much, especially in the kind of the recent iterations of the meta. But man, it must feel so good to be able to click those heads as 1987. And you have the transcendence in case you need to hit kind of like that escape button. But I don't think you're going to need that when you can see where the enemy is coming from and you can just hit this EMP. Ooh, landing on multiple members. Nice follow-up here coming out. Silver going to be picked off early, but a rally by Zihi, hoping to maybe compete against this. Transcendence by 1987, looking to survive through anything being thrown at Team CC. The double Zarya from the duplicate on T1W, hoping to have enough protection from those shields to not only keep alive, but also generate that grab. You see it going to fade here. Will not be able to potentially reach it again as Shujia Falls out of the Zarya, looking for a nice fallback here, but there's still a lot of energy for Sia. Yeah, Sia is definitely trying to tell people exactly what their name means in the situation. Um, and it's going to start by really trying to help out Gaga on the front lines and keep them up. Well, and not only keeping up on the front line, you, that's actually a really nice side flank here coming out from Shujia, where Dia was not able to cover. But meanwhile, there's still a ton of damage going on the front line with Gaga just expending that electrical damage from the cannon and cleaning house consistently. Shujia, what are you doing back there? Oh. Are you trying to say hi to Dia? I don't think Dia wants to say hi to you today. Mm -hmm. Especially after 1987 being picked off, Dia's just like, uh-uh, that's my friend. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely not. Um, but but Dia is just hunting these heads right now, especially Shuji. As Shuji just can't play the game. Grab in the corner, going to get a lot of members pulled into that. Sia with that charge doing significant amounts. You've got Dia still maintaining that high ground, taking down Pineapple in the face. With that primal range in the corner, taking down another. Silver cannot survive with the hack. And what a great time bank here for Team CC to switch this side position. Yeah, three minutes, 38 seconds if we get a chance to go in extra innings. That's a lot of time to work with. And that's definitely something that Team CC can kind of utilize and, and take away if we, we do get to that point. But I have a feeling, Rich, they're going to try to stop it here. I don't think they want T1W to, to make it to the point where they go they have to go head-to-head -head in rounds three and rounds four. Um, and it's been really difficult for T1W to break through Team CC's defenses, especially what we saw on Control Point, if that's mm -hmm. any indication of how this one might go. Team CC is such a great team when they get a chance to set up, and even sometimes when they don't. They're so versatile and they're so adaptable that in a lot of situations, even if they're taking disadvantaged fights, Team CC can either force out a lot of ultimates or sometimes just win those uh, disadvantaged fights outright. Um, and that's something that I think T1W is just really struggling against in terms of their play style, mm -hmm. is how to adjust to that themselves. I mean, split-second decisions are critical in the game of Overwatch and just esports in general. You have to have the type of adaptation at your fingertips. And at this point, I think T1W is really going to have to worry about how they rotate onto this point to not be overwhelmed by Team CC. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think something else that we don't get a chance to talk about either. We got a chance to talk about how 1987 gets a chance to click heads on the Senyata. But what about these Brigitas? Mm -hmm. The fact that, like, this is enough healing from a Brigitte and a Zenyatta is astounding. That, that just speaks volumes to how Team CC has been able to play as a whole unit. And I feel like T1W is kind of feeling that pressure a little bit, recognizing, you know what, having the Baptiste and having the Immortality Field might be a little bit better to have in our kit. I'd like to see how this goes for T1W. And hopefully that Baptiste can gain and yield more value entering into this fight. Silver up front getting very low, but you've got Shuji with a lot of harass on this high ground, especially because of the Brigitte play. Nice displacement there, using the flay to reposition that dive from Gaga, being out in the open, going to get exploited instantly by Pineapple Ooh. in the back. There's the double tap as well onto Dia. Looks for innovation, almost gets it, but falls short. Trying to rotate through the hotels, finding that back line. Another will not get away fast enough. No amount of displacement can get away from that six shooter. As at this point, T1W is going to just transition easily into this next payload if the last few of Team CC can be picked off. Yeah, they're definitely taking control of this point. And Team CC might just be stuck back here. I don't think that they... They're, the whole team is split. Half the team is in the front and half the team is still trying to fight their way back. Oh, it's going to force out the Transcendence here, too, to try and escape. Hoping to do so, but can't manage to with that pick finally going to come out later. Felt that the Sacrifice should have came out with 1987 instead of getting rid of that Transcendence to carry over into this next fight. Yeah, I, on the other hand, though, 1997 hasn't really needed the Transcendence um, True. in a lot of ways. And, and especially when you're taking a look at Silver having a, the, a Supercharger by playing the Orisa, sometimes the Transcendence actually isn't enough to deal with the damage that comes out from both the supercharger and the amplification matrix. So I feel like it's still kind of okay in that situation. Maybe that's like the disadvantaged fights we were talking about, right? And just using a transcendence because that might have been a case where Team CC finds their footing. But they're able to come back into this one. And coming back into this one, T1W has that Deadeye trying to maintain this corner position for a nice flank. Silver gets the kill onto Innovation, combining Molen Rand's Flux with a lot of output here, managing to take over multiple members from Team CC, forcing it back. Molen Ren, Kinetic Grasp, mitigating some remaining damage coming through. But that is a nice time bank carrying over into this next checkpoint, and T1W really changing it up now. Oh, yeah. T1W is changing it up for sure, but so is Team CC. Gaga is playing the Wrecking Ball, the Hammond, the one character that has really made a name for Gaga. Um, and unfortunately, we don't get a chance to see too much of it because this double shield composition from T1W is going to force out the same from Team CC. They're not going to be able to fight otherwise. Mm -hmm. 
And with five minutes to go, it's a lot of time to work with here. Innovation on the front, looking for an opportunity to maybe get multiple members with that EMP, but playing hesitantly, gets stunned actually by the Sigma, but in the corner, it will be used. Hitting a few with Pineapple, getting the Deadeye to try and counter that EMP usage, even exchange for two at the present moment, but there's still a lot of momentum forward by T1W with a nice flank from Pineapple too. T1W is speed running through this King's Row map. They are definitely trying to make a name for themselves in this matchup, and they're the only team that I feel like has really the capabilities of dealing with the powerhouse that is Team CC. They were able to beat them in the group stages week two, three to two, and T1W wants to say, you know what, that wasn't a fluke, we're here to stay. And while you have T1W fall back with nice accretion, taking down Dia, which is important. That DPS going to be very critical to use in these last few meters to go. The Flux by Molenran is prepared, has not yet been used. At, there are multiple members still in the back from Team CC regrouping. And honestly, with innovation on this high ground, really just trying to get a hack out and harass, it's giving a lot of time to force back T1W and try and reset. Ooh, forces at the Transcendence, but yeah, I think T1W is is really kind of trying to play with this amplification matrix. Unfortunately, it gets answered by the Transcendence, and mm -hmm. now T1W is kind of off kilter a little bit on the ultimates that they would have liked to use. They rolls in here, Rich, with five ultimates to stack on top of each other, and they weren't able to accomplish their goal because Innovation shut everybody down. And yeah. now, though, here comes that Flux. Flux on the side on that upper position, hoping that... Pineapple can gain some advantage with this, but still pumping out a lot of shots up front on to Gaga with this Arisa. The Flux gonna be forced down by Molen Ren, lifting up two in the back, does get taken down as Pineapple continues to just shoot those bullets in the back onto Innovation. And with the Amplification Matrix by Super Rich, it could be enough for a chance to recover here, but the momentum of the, these fights has definitely transitioned at a more slower pace than they were once prior in this map. Well, they had to, just because of the difference in team composition that happened between the first phase of the map into the latter parts of King's Row, you have to play this a lot slower. Arisa is slow. I know you know this because she's yep. your favorite hero in the <laughs> entire world, um, but Arisa is a very, very slow character, and the way that you have to maneuver not only the deployable shield from Arisa, but also the experimental barrier from Sigma, it has to be played slowly and methodically. Silver again rotating around the corner with Molen Ren. Again with the Arisa up front leading the way with that deployable shield. A fallback by Team CC is important to make sure that they are ready for this supercharger and potentially the Deadeye in the back with Innovation. Meanwhile, holding on to that EMP for an opportunity to shut down not only the supercharger, but the enemies as well. There it comes through, an even Deadeye from both sides. You have Dia claiming a lot of value on the defensive side. Both supports being picked off. Shujia working with Pineapple to convert this into their favor, managing to do so a couple meters left to go, and now it's in desperation for Team CC. Dia onto the Doomfist, along with wow. Gaga rotating to the Wrecking Ball, and this recovery does come through with innovation on the Tracer as well. Wow, that was a fantastic stall coming in from the tanks of Sia and Gaga for Team CC. They bought their team just enough time for Innovation to come out on the Tracer and clean up this house. T1W, they, that was their fight to win. And it's so unfortunate that they didn't get a chance to do that. Now they have a minute left on the clock, potentially two chances if they are able to move in fast enough. But Team CC is not going to make it easy. Dia is now set up on the high ground ready to click some heads and make sure that T1W does not approach this point as a team of six. In addition, also having innovation on this May to just cause so much harass and prevention, the crowd control is significant. And with Dia, like you said, being on this high ground for the window, rotation for T1W has to go through that low ground or make sure that those shields are up. The amplification matrix comes out by Protoss with a duplication of the May. Dropping in the back, getting the wall, but instantly countered. No blizzard comes out from T1W and that is absolutely devastating and a retreat has to come through. That was a super expensive fight for T1W, which means that they don't really have resources to use in this next fight. Whereas Team CC has now gotten a chance to work up to 
the Widowmaker Ultimate, which they will have those sights to see where T1W is coming from. But most importantly, Rich, they have a Blizzard. Innovation put in enough work in that fight as May to have a Blizzard online to just completely crowd control T1W off of this point and maybe even prevent them from touching with three seconds left. Mm -hmm. This is Team CC's match to lose at this point. That win condition with the Blizzard landing onto two tanks, but the Fortify comes out from the Arisa. Nobody gonna get close enough to take and touch that point and this will be team cc taking the second map first to three here and t1w is going to have a massive mountain to climb to switch this back it's gonna be a really tough one for t1w but that was a close map mm -hmm. t1w swiftly took points one and two of king's row but it was at the very end there where team cc just said you know what if we can't beat you at your own game, which is the double shield composition, mm -hmm. because you barely got us, <laughs> we're gonna slow things down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens when we throw a May into the mix and a Widowmaker into the mix and see how that works. And it worked out beautifully for Team CC. It really speaks volumes to how well they are, their adaptability can really kind of work as a strength for that team. And we'll see if we get some more of that Widow play. Again, Furnace being a very difficult portion of King's Row for any team to try and push through on the attacking side. But yes, as you said, those adaptations from Team CC have allowed them to prevail, especially in this King's Row map. We will be going to a brief break between these two teams before we start getting into our third map. So don't go anywhere, friends, because we've got a lot more Overwatch to show you.
Hello and welcome back, everybody. As we've already been able to see Team CC claim two maps already, first to three here. And we're going to go into this next one to see if T1W can start changing this momentum and taking it back. Necra, I mean, we've talked a little bit about it, but what, what in the grand scale of things do you think will allow this T1W team to go into Hanamura with an advantage? I think it's just like continuing to go through the motions that they have been. They've looked better and better against Team CC from Ilios going through King's Row. And now as we go on to Hanamura as our third map of the set, I feel like T1W is just like right at the brink of bringing this into extra maps. T1W is definitely a team that has been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Team CC before. But the big difference maker here is that Team CC is just a league above it feels like in a lot of different ways in terms of their team coordination in terms of individual play styles and i think that's just been really hard for team t1w to to just catch up to and we've seen it week after week after week three weeks already and you want team cc right now to claim this to enter into the grand finals and i mean come on i mean who who wouldn't of their team want to say let's have four consecutive weeks of victories here but you know t1w wants to take down the giant i mean everybody knows team cc as this uh, just massive just deity amongst the region so going into this map of hanamura hopefully t1w can reform and come back and take this map I think the difference maker, too, is that this is the first time that we've seen T1W play with Shuji on the Echo, which it mm -hmm. might be a composition that T1W is uncomfortable with. The way True. that they've played before is that they give all their resources to Shuji, and if it's a Doomfist map, then T1W is able to dominate and they're able to <laughs> really just like show their power. Um, and, and they have to flex onto a little bit of a different play style this time, which they might not be as comfortable with. But Team CC coming out of the gates now, they're having Dia play the Tracer, not mm -hmm. the Echo. Maybe going back to switch up, uh, switch it up to something else here. But yeah, there's that Widowmaker again. I think that All speaks right. a lot. I think that speaks a lot to what Dia might, might be feeling. Yeah, and I, I'm curious to see how well it's going to work out. You've already got Sia taken out in the fight. Dia going to have a difficult time finding some decent sight lines through this doorway. There's only very minimal positions to be to not be really unfavored in your shots. Yeah, but I feel like it's the pressure of the Widowmaker that you see in Team Preview that makes you really question your positioning on T1W and whether or not you can actually poke your head. Oh, but now hit scan on the opposite side. Pineapple with the Dynamite taking down Super Rich, which is critical to prevent that output of healing and armor regeneration with already a little bit of harass on the point, not yet going to draw attention. But as you said earlier, Dia finding Shujia on the Echo, peeking your head out is a death sentence. It really is. I mean, look at how deadly that shot was. And now T1W is down a player. Down two. Dia going to rotate to that high ground. Wants to take down another. Can't manage to do so as this rotation comes through. Team CC is Dia still actually watching cross that courtyard. If anyone wants to show themselves, specifically Shujia. But 1986 takes down Zihi instead saying, Dia, I got some shots that I can get too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is exactly what we were talking about. Getting a chance to see supports pop off. 1987 must be reveling in that experience right now. But uh, a pretty early take here for Team CC. A little bit of a stagger onto T1W, but now Team CC is going to have five minutes left in the bank in order to make this next play. And Innovation is already there and waiting to hit this EP. Can most of T1W reside on that balcony where innovation just shows themselves to reposition, forcing them from that high ground. And Team CMC going to enter in. They have to lead with this fight. They can't allow T1W to rotate back like this. You've got both supports along with that McCree play down low. Innovation pushing up top to regroup with Team CC, but no EMP going to be forced out just yet. Not yet. There was a great rotation by T1W to really force Team CC to use their cooldowns, and now T1W might be able to go in. EMP gonna get at least one, but there is still the super rich rally to be in conjunction with the EMP's usage. Silver and grab with a duplication from Shuji on the Zarya. Two grabs available for this fight because of that duplication, but I'm not sure if there's gonna be enough damage to follow up onto it. But as I say it, Pineapple popping off. 
Absolutely. I mean, the two Gravitons, one Graviton is bad enough, but then you get caught in a second Grav, and that's where Team CC is like, okay, we gotta we gotta hit the escape button. I think we take the loss for this fight. And Dia actually gonna move off of Widowmaker to a Kiro that has a little bit of point presence, a little bit more point presence, and that's gonna be the McCree. And I think that the McCree is actually something that could be really useful here as the rest of Team CC decides to switch things up. We've got Sia moving over to the Sigma. We've got Gaga on the Orisa. Innovation moving over to the May and Super Rich for one of the first times in this series flexing onto a different hero and that's going to be the Batiste. So this is going to be more of that double shield composition that we got a chance to see on King's Row and it hits hard. And you got Dia from the side going to get a lot of damage. Silver picked off easily and a rotation comes through and now you like you said the double shield composition Sia rotating down the stairway to give some coverage as 1987 picks off Protoss Super Rich going to get a great immortality field to prevent some follow through from T1W is 1987 still popping off here getting a triple almost amongst everybody you have all of Team CC now going to transition onto the point after multiple members from T1W have been picked off. The compete and contest on this point is still viable, but when a May wall comes out from the side and a grab with no follow-up occurs, it is for sure going to Team CC. That was a very, very good fight for Team CC. They had just switched up their composition and they were able to I catch T1W off guard, but now the sides are swapped. T1W is going to get a chance to take their attack push, and this is where we really get a chance to see the difference in play styles between these two teams. And I think that the way that T1W plays, they're very momentum based. You got a chance to see that on King's Row, where they were able to move swiftly through points one and two. And if they're able to generate that same momentum for A going into B and maybe snowball, I think that's where we're really gonna see T1W find success. Hopefully they can going into this because you've seen a decent time bank generated by Team CC on the attack just under three minutes, which is nothing to scoff at, especially when you come to a map like this. But you've got now Dia rotating back to this Echo play with Innovation on the Sombra. That dynamic duo working out really well because of so much space that both Sia and Gaga are giving and just also harass for letting Innovation basically do what they want. Yeah, Innovation has been playing a very tough role, and I think it's, it's something that they've been playing and executing t beautifully for T1W. It's It's been very difficult, but I would like to see Pineapple play more of this Tracer, because I think that this composition is something that T1W has really shined on, uh, with which is that double shield. And I think that with Pineapple on the Tracer, that might be able to dish out a bit of the same medicine, but Innovation, oh. what? out the gate sujia get picked off innovation reducing the time instantly that's gonna wear a few seconds but pineapple like you said on this tracer has a lot riding on their shoulders yeah pineapple does definitely have a lot riding on their shoulders but it's not just that but it's also sujia sujia is playing this echo and, and while they're playing it really well they just seem to be getting caught off guard by shots coming in from other places and you've got Shuji at least getting Dia out of the way. So not really worrying too much about the sticky bombs or that focus beam, which deals the double damage below that 30% health. You can actually see Shuji chasing quickly onto that Winston play. Manages to survive though. Gaga actually can regroup here with Team CC with Pineapple harassing around that outer position around the Pagoda, trying to penetrate onto this point where the bell is to give some extra damage and pressure while Innovation on the outskirts is being a little overwhelmed. That Pineapple play on this Tracer is really working out, and the Pulse Bomb lands onto the Winston, but Primal Rage has to be forced here. Primal Rage is going to provide a lot of sustain into this next fight, and it might just be exactly what Team CC needs. Oh, absolutely. Rotating around the backside, regrouping with the rest of the team, cleaning up. You've got Molin Ren jumping off the edge there to potentially regroup. And at this point, another solid hold from Team CC with already almost half the time bank gone. Yeah, I think that T1W is just on the verge, though, of finding their in into this what seems like just super comfortable defense coming out from Team CC. And it's going to be just getting ultimates online and making sure that they've got cooldowns ready to go and that Gaga isn't doing too much to them before they're able to even move in. Well, and you talked about the ultimates being used. You've got innovation with this EMP entering in with both tanks being affected and diving forward. 
you have this subtle evacuation from T1W to wait until that EMP expends with the Flux coming out from the side. Gaga getting lifted. Lots of damage, so the drop will take down two tanks with the Sticky Bombs and the follow-up. And a minute and 45, you've got Protoss even committing that Amplification Matrix to secure enough output onto this point. Transcendence and a Duplication Dia will get the Sigma to try and keep this fight alive trying to keep this fight alive, but I think T1W is just on the brink of being able to break this defense. They just need to try to get innovation out of the way, and there it is. Minute and 20 seconds, Molan Ran gets the double on the front, rotating back with Shujia to clean up. The duplication going to be carried over with the Pulse Bomb, and hopefully this can be enough momentum. Like you said, T1W needs that to carry into the second point. They've got a duplicate. And there's a Zarya that makes an excellent duplicate target because Team CC does have Sia playing that Zarya again. So that's something that Shujia can really look at as being a duplicate target for their ultimate. And then you also have Pineapple's tr Pulse Bomb, which if they land on the right targets, could really put a stunt into Team CC's defense. And that's kind of what you want to see here. When you're playing for this point B, you have to really make the most of your ults. Duplication out. You called it on the Zarya. Throwing out a grab early by Sia. Locking down multiple members. An early pick off on the duplication so we don't see it from T1W. Sticky Bombs take out one, but in exchange, Dia claiming another. Pumping out a lot onto that Silver 3 Orisa on the high ground as Gaga still harassed against Molin Ren. And Innovation managing defensively as well. Every member of Team CC, despite the chaos that comes through from T1W, recovery after recovery from Team CC. And Team CC now has a really good handle on the defense. They have the Primal Rage for the extra sustain, and then they also have the Blizzard. The Blizzard is a huge tool in these fights. And with three minutes left, Innovation might be able to get a second one online. So if Team CC can use this Blizzard to keep the one winner at bay for this next fight, then they'll be on a really good ultimate rotation to continue forward. Also, if they if they really need it, then Dia might be able to get a couple heads with that high noon too. Right, 100%. With Dia's positioning, it has to be on point here, especially wanting to try and keep some separation. Even 1987, playing that low background position out of any sort of opportunity of being picked off as stellar support gameplay in the back. Gaga getting half already, but has the primal rage just in case Team CC does get outmaneuvered here. And T1W already forcing out that increase in damage with the amplification matrix amplification matrix and rally to start off this fight and the primal rage in use as well from gaga harassing that high ground the supercharger and immortality field instantly picked off the dead eye gains one and a follow-up by dia rotating to that high ground chasing the brigade uh, with the flashbang so 1987 can get the kill minute and 50 seconds and there is the team kill bell Something that I think Team CC does super, super well is they just collapse whenever that gets called. You just see a swarm of Team CC members fall onto their target on T1W, and they play it really well. Zihi now just says, you know what? There's not enough healing on T1W. I'm going to switch over to the Ana, maybe even get a sleep here. Uh, and I think the sleep's actually going to be the most important part of Ana's kit just to take out a member of Team CC. 15 seconds those picks need to be critical for t1w to have a last opportunity the blizzard by innovation will be committed to this super rich cleaning up with the rest of the front line rotating down that stairway hard shutdown with 60 seconds for a final attempt i mean you're shooting down a straightaway so it's gonna be really easy especially when everybody's caught in a blizzard to be able to land those shots but with 50 seconds left what does t1w have in order to approach this point they they have pineapple going over to the hanzo just to add a little bit of shield break but more importantly if they can just delete members from team cc and give themselves that advantage in this fight then they'll be able to take this point but uh shushia's duplicate's gonna have to be big for this one it's critical. It, it has to be everything T1W needs. 
to take and complete the second point. Getting some damage down the long sight line. You've got the duplication onto the Sigma. Great selection going into this as Sia forces out the Flux. Immortality Field already brought down as Sia continues to funnel damage with the Kinetic Grass. Can't mitigate the stun. Has to drop down. Beautiful response with the Baptiste to keep alive as Mole and Ren tries to compete with their own Flux, but Transcendence keeps a lot of Team CC alive as the overtime does commence. Silver 3 on the low ground with the Orisa does get picked off. Overtime shredding away. Anybody able to touch it? Molenren barely gets those feet onto that point as the overtime shreds down the blizzard as a win condition locking down the remaining members of T1W. Team CC has taken all three maps and will be moving into the finals to hopefully reach a week four successful win after win. Can they just sweep? <laughs> is that how good this team of Team CC is where they're going to take week one, week two, week three, and potentially now week four? They've already mm -hmm. solidified their spot as the number one seed for the Chinese contenders playoffs. Mm -hmm. But how good is good for this team? At this point, you've basically reached the summit. Now you're just making sure that you you pitch the tent. You're sitting there. You're just making sure that you're bunkering in and saying, I'm here, friends. I've reached the top of the mountain. Is anyone going to be able to give me a nice shove down for a swift, swift way? But honestly, we've already said it. Team CC has been able to take week over week, and they will be going against Billy Billy up next to see if they can claim that week four or if Billy Billy is going to manage to take a win for the first time from Team CC, but we will not be the ones casting it. It is always a pleasure to be casting with you, Necro. Oh, yeah. We've got two others coming through. We've got both LaFon and Pulsible bringing you the action in this final match again between Team CC and Billy Billy. So we hope that you have a lovely rest of your night with both of them bringing you some amazing completed week four Overwatch action. So don't go anywhere, friends, because we're going to bring you that game in just a moment.